everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the behind the scenes vlog for the 2023 Chemnitz Hanukkah special. While I'm working on a mystery sampler like Hanukkah, I can't share any spoilers because I don't want to spoil anything. So instead I film little vlog clips of things that I wish I could talk about in live streams or share along the way. So we're going to go through some of my thought process as I was designing uh, this year's Hanukkah special. I'll talk about making and picking some of the extras, twisting mini skeins, and more. I haven't reviewed the footage yet so in a true more vlog fashion uh, we'll see where we end up together. 2023 has been a really hard year for me personally and as this is a vlog versus a more standard video I will be talking more about my feelings and emotions. At the end of July my mom died. It was very surprising, unexpected, shocking and even though it's now been f about four months it still is very new and fresh and so I don't think that this is something I'm going to be talking about a lot during the vlog, but I know that it is going to come up and so I wanted to give you a heads up uh, in the introduction. There's a possibility I might be emotional at points in this vlog. The other reason why I'm bringing this up now is that typically I start working on my Hanukkah special in August and clearly that did not happen this year. So when I started dyeing yarn in September I was very stressed about wondering if I was going to be able to finish and put something together that I was going to be proud of. But I can tell you now I am super proud of where the series came out and I'm super happy with how everything came together. So don't worry the vlog is mostly going to be very upbeat, excited, standard Rebecca, but I did just want to share this at the beginning to give some context as to where my head is at. The vlog is mostly going to be in chronological order, but I might uh, group some things together in ways that make a little bit of sense. We'll see. Uh, as I said, I've not reviewed the footage yet. At the time I'm filming this introduction, uh, I am still 39 years old. Uh, tonight will be night five of Hanukkah this year, but we are now about to go back in time to January 2023 when I filmed the very first clips for this vlog. It is January 4th, 2023 and Hanukkah has not been over that long. But I was talking and teasing about, I don't know if it, during the vlog, but during the chat, how I've already done some planning for Hanukkah 2023 uh, last year. Honestly, I don't know when Hanukkah is yet. I haven't checked the dates. I'm so far from ordering yarn and anything like that. But I wanted to show off some of the extras that I have. And if I push any of them to next year, then I'll just delete that little bit of the clip. But I thought it'd be fun to officially start the vlog, not even a whole month after I edited the last one. Doesn't this look a little bit like indie? I mean, I try to pick charms that are either knitting related, science related, somehow Chemnitz related. The penguins, I love penguins. I got married at an aquarium. That's why we've done a lot of penguins in the past, but I couldn't resist this adorable charm. And once I found it, I wanted to make sure I ordered enough uh, in case it went out of stock or something. This next charm is very, very similar to one I used for the extras in 2021, um, but rather than a pastel kind of glitter, it is a dark glitter, which gives us a lot of contrast for a beautiful snowflake. I was going to look at all my little glass jars and had a panic moment when I realized that these ones don't have uh, little pins, little screws in the lid. But then I found my stash that does have the screws in them. Are these? No, and these are even a little bit bigger than the other ones. So I think that that was just a different one I ordered. But I'd like to put, ooh, I don't know if I'm going to put like Angelina yarn roving in them, but I did that goodness I think it was for 2020 oh gosh last year was 2022 not 2021 maybe I did this in 2021 and so I'd like to do that again I just don't know what I'll put in them yet but I got enough of them so we're ready to go I'm also hoping to 3d print something again and you never know there might be some other changes but this is where I see myself going and I've had this planned I think actually since summer in 2022 so 
We're ready to go, but I expect now you won't hear from me for a number of months because I have other special events that I need to plan. The boys' school starts in about two weeks from today, or no, from tomorrow. They have two weeks of summer left. But I decided to refresh and sharpen all of our colored pencils at home. And that gave us this really, really pretty and speckly, I guess, shavings. And so I have some little glass vials that I can fill with something. I'm thinking about filling it with this as like a leave no color behind kind of thing. And I don't know if I'll try to get some UV resin and use some of those color chips at the bottom or what. But this is, this is my pencil sharpener. And so I've just been emptying this into, I'm going to unplug that so I can try to be on camera a little bit. I've been emptying out this and all these chips and you can see the little flakes, colored flakes from the colored pencils. It reminds me of dye, at least a little bit. And something about the curls make me think of fiber. And so I haven't decided if I'll do this or if I'm gonna put yarn in each of them, but I think if I can get the resin to work the way I want, this will be like, you know, like, like a speckled, Feel like a speckled fiber and I'm literally leaving no something behind which is something I love to do so we'll see editing Rebecca just popping back in to fill some holes I did play around with some UV resin and tried mixing some of the actual like pencil lead shavings uh, in with the resin but it was too dark it didn't really give a dye feel and make it feel like the wood was getting dyed so i ended up just putting these uh, shavings in the jars and then i used some super glue to secure the little lids on so that way the corks won't pop out and create a mess and then with all the charms, I always attach them to little lobster claws uh, with jump rings. I like the lobster claw because it both works for knitters and for crocheters. And you can also use it as a progress keeper by attaching it onto a stitch because you can open and close the little ring. So that's something that I really like. I also did some 3D printing this year as well, but I don't think I filmed any clips of it. So when I show the 2023 Gelt charm at the end of the video, go and check out some of the past Hanukkah vlogs. Uh, and so you can see me doing that with the 3D printer. Uh, every year we have to redo the file a little bit because we don't remember the settings we used for the past year. Uh, but yeah, I think that that's now that little guilt charm is now an annual tradition. I think this is the third year I've made one. It's the last day of August, and this is, I think, the latest I've ever ordered yarn for Hanukkah. I haven't really come back to work yet, um, but I realized because I saw a post of someone looking for platinum DK mini skeins at 20 grams that those are out of stock. But the micro skeins at 10 grams are in stock, so I think I can do something with extra micros instead of having to make my own minis. I don't know. But I had to decide what it is I'm going to do. And so <laughs> here's a yarn order. Now I already have a lot of the Platinum and Platinum DK uh, micro skeins. So I have a bunch of those already and I'm getting enough. So that way, again, if I scorch a night, I have enough yarn. But this is stressful because normally I have dyed a lot of the yarn by now. And I have a lot of the extras, but I haven't planned the cards. I haven't planned. I have a rough plan for packaging that maybe I'll go ahead and do. I just, I don't know. I am nervous. <laughs> I am nervous and I don't know. This one's extra emotional. So I'm going to go check out, place this order, and then hopefully I'll launch next week. Oh gosh. <laughs> I am so frustrated right now. I am just trying to start filming some of the tonals for the Hanukkah special, finally starting the dyeing process. And Indy was coughing each time I was trying to take. Okay, you can't help coughing, that's fine. He finally starts coughing and then starts the, I say a few sentences and barks, but only when I'm talking because he wants some attention. Ah, I love, love, love my dog as evident by uh, something that is in the sampler. But, oh my gosh, I am just so frustrated. I'm like, universe, please, please, please let me get some filming done. 
especially since all I want to do is dissolve some dye, add it in here. That's it. That's all I want to do. <laughs> like, why does it have to be so hard? Oh, man. Hey, Indy. You want to make things easy for Mama, don't you? Did you want to make things easy for Mama? I know there's another dog barking. And, well, full disclosure, I have a little treat. Well, it's really just a piece of dog food for good puppies for looking at me. See, that's all I got. Nothing else. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> okay, it's September, and this is, I don't know if this is going to be night one, but let's see. It's around overnight, and, like, it is cold. Like, the water feels like it was refrigerated. And even so, there's construction going on. That dye bath is clear. That is amazing. Uh, and the first batch I did of these, and the reason why I'm coming out and vlogging here, the first batch I finished uh, yesterday, I didn't think to film any clips, but the day that I put the first batch out, it was raining. So it was chilly and raining and then cold overnight and the color is still cleared, but definitely want to still steam them. But yeah, I guess in one week, cause I guess I started end of last week, actually filming the nights. 20% done, and 30% of the sampler yarn is in some kind of progress. Once these are steamed and washed, this will be all done. Uh, I've got the resist uh, in a five gallon bucket in the garage, and the twisted three times yarn is currently uh, the prototype's done. And so I'm gonna do two more rounds of that today. So that's where I am. Feeling good, making some progress. Oh my gosh, the cards just arrived. <gasps> they look so cool. So the background is related to like the backdrop of my actual logo of that logo right there. Uh, and I commissioned an artist to draw a dreidel drop spindle. Oh my goodness. I wasn't sure how well the silver foil would work out, but that's some wool getting drafted into yarn, spinning around the shaft of a drop spindle. It's just a dreidel on the bottom. And so how appropriate, and I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, I told you I had some fun art for Hanukkah. No, it's not an emote. Maybe I'll make a new emote for channel members, but oh my gosh. I would flip through and we'll, we'll see if the random, yep, that one's a random one you can see. <laughs> There's some other things in here that are collated, but oh my gosh, I, oh man. So I didn't draw the image myself. I commissioned that, right? Uh, and, but I turned it into a card and I did the, I mean, the card work, but Oh, I'm so excited to sign these postcards. Ah! <laughs> I'm so happy with how it turned out. I was so nervous because the silver foil, the detail was so fine. But, oh, I love it. Oh, man, I'm so thankful for graphic artists who looked at my mood boards and brought it to life. Oh, my gosh, I don't know if I filmed other clips of this, but I'll show. Maybe I'll insert some clips of what my mood board looked like when I wanted to show what I was looking for. Oh, I'm so happy. Whew, I'm starting to film some conclusions. As of today, September 20 something, uh, 2023, I have filmed uh, four of the nights. I've done the neon tonals, I've done the black and resist, I've done the twisted skeins three times, and then the dip dye to break colors. So I've dyed 50% of the video's worth, but 60% of the yarn. And by now you should know that uh, the two bonus gains that everyone's gonna get is gonna be a tonal black light blue and a tonal black. And I'm very excited that the tonal black worked so well because this is a good example of how to make just like a black yarn that is great for color work. But one concern I have about Hanukkah is that the four mini skeins that we have from these two videos, the black light blue plus a second neon tonal, the black tonal and that neon resist, those four all go well together. Those four would make a really great 
set. You could do some kind of color work thing with them. Uh, those definitely make sense together. And then we're gonna have other colorways that probably aren't neon, or maybe I'll work neon in. So for the people that do like every night of Hanukkah in a row and do the yarn together, somehow it always ends up looking really good, even though I don't plan for the colors to be together. So I don't know, I'm a little bit worried about how things may or may not stand out. I do try to order the videos so things look good together, but yeah, and I don't know. I'm a, I'm a little curious what you guys think about there being some tonals in this sampler, because on one hand, tonals are a lot of people's favorite thing to knit or crochet with. They're some of my favorite to actually work with. But on the other hand, they're not as exciting as a video. So that's why I finally did all those Dion comparisons. I'm really happy. I'm really happy with how that video is going to come out. But I'm not sure what you guys think about having like a tonal tonal versus even a layered tonal in the set. Uh, so I hope that it's still exciting because of all the techniques I've done for Hanukkah, I don't think I've done many straight tonals. And because this year I couldn't get 20 gram mini skeins and I needed to do more tens, I needed to think about what I wanted to do for those bonus 20 grams. Because I want the set to have 100 grams, not just 80. And so I was like, oh, I can do some tonals and tonals that go with another colorway from that night. And okay, I lied. I did do tonals one year. The year I did 125 different colors, that bonus was a tonal. But that tonal also had nothing to do with the rest of the colors that I dyed throughout the series necessarily. And so this time I wanted there to be like some cohesion with the tonals that I used. And I wanted there to be a little bit of fun in that there's gonna be some differences between each of the sets, which is why I did five resists even though that didn't work out perfectly. The yarn is fun. I could do this over again and do something that I like slightly better, but I've learned from it, and so I guess that's good. Uh, but anyway, I figured I'd just pop on as I'm taking a break. Oh, I need to film those yarn mops from video B. <laughs> if you ordered one of the yarn mops, you'll probably notice that they're labeled with a letter because I don't decide the final video order until the videos are ready to go. The one exception was the year of Hanukkah that I did night one, one color, night two, two colors. That year, the order was sort of part of the whole process, but uh, most years I decide on the order based on what makes sense. Uh, color wise for a color story or something and so but I want to make sure that I label the yarn mops the right night for the right video and there's some yarn mops that I could get confused and forget oh did this come from the neon tonal video or the neon resist video and so I'm labeling things a b c d based on the approximate order that I filmed them in which uh, yeah, I think that that's fairly accurate. And so that's why there might be a letter on those tags. I probably say this every year. I don't know how many clips I filmed, how long this is. Sometimes there's hours of footage for the vlog. Sometimes there's not. And I don't know if I've filmed me not feeling like bouncy and happy. Um, I will say as an emotional check-in, uh, so Yom Kippur was two days ago. Uh, I am not doing super great <laughs> emotionally, but actually filming these conclusions has me like feeling bouncy outwardly, even though inward I'm feeling sad. Um, and it's funny to say that and still sound like bouncy and chipper, but I guess I'm like pushing it down right now. So yeah, I'm just really, really missing my mom. And so yeah, that, that's hard. Um, and the other thing I guess that's on my plate is I had a very firm vision for the first four videos I filmed of what I wanted to do and what I wanted to make. Uh, and I have a lot of other ideas, more than four ideas for the rest of the videos written down. I have ideas, but I don't know what colors I want to do. And I know I need to not worry about the overall color story and pick things that aren't going to make me happy. Uh, and that I already have a very great variety of bright tonals, dark with pops of bright, uh, almost like parrot-like, but almost rainbow, and then green and purple, which weren't represented as much in that twisted rainbow. 
we have things and that work that cover a lot of bases. And so I just need to play because I'm chasing joy and enjoying, I really am enjoying the making of these videos. I'm just personally struggling probably because of the holidays and and it's the start of the like fall holiday season so I know everything that comes is going to be hard. I'm hanging in there. As I said, my brain's all over the place. I'm definitely more scatterbrained than normal. That is true. I guess I'm just happy to be filming and at least I'm going through the motions in a way that like it helps, you know? It helps to like try to be bouncy happy me because I am legitimately super excited about these colors. I mean, who can feel sad with this next to them, right? <laughs> I just have to twist a lot of minis. And uh, oh, if you're curious what I'm binging while I'm twisting right now, um, I'm currently uh, watching The Good Wife, which I know I'm very late. That show ended a long time ago. But yeah, that's what I've been watching while I'm twisting. I just lasagna 800 skeins, 800 skeins, no, 800 grams of yarn for night. Well, it doesn't have a number yet, it's just E. But there's only 500 grams of yarn left, so I think I'm gonna use 100 grams of the remaining yarn as a full skein and just do 600 grams total in there, just so that way I can have a complete third layer. I don't know if I'll be talking about that in the video, but yeah, there'll be one full skein available in the shop if it hasn't been already, then it might be now. Who knows? Rebecca in chat or something will let you all know about that. I'm currently signing the holiday cards and the sparkly purple pen I am using uh, will smudge unless I leave the cards out to dry for a little bit. I'm still super, super excited with the design, but it's just funny because I have to do it in stages. Ultimately though, this makes a lot of sense anyway because when I'm signing a lot of things, my hand can start to get tired. So doing them in smaller batches over a long period of time makes sense. And so I'm actually doing this way earlier um, than I might otherwise. But I figured, hey, I have a few minutes before taking the kids to the bus stop. May as well sign some cards. <laughs> Here are nine of the 10 mini skein bundles, plus uh, two boxes up there of Lena, Leave No Die Behind skeins. And I have debated and debated and debated what to do for the final color, which may not be night eight. It might be earlier in the series, but I debated. Like I brought Keith up here and he was like, well, what about yellow or what about red? And well, some people aren't gonna have a full yellow from there. We do have yellow in our lasagna one. And ultimately, I remembered this is about chasing joy and I know because the the last colorway I dyed was that purple up there so I'm like well I already did something that was all purpley and then I mean that one has purple too but it's a little more navy leaning but I figured I should just lean in and go full-on Rebecca. The Rebecca that's walking down the stairs while vlogging maybe not smart I'm gonna stop. <laughs> The Rebecca that considered doing something broken violet at some point because I've done the mixing to create speckles recently and it looked so much like when I would try to speckle with a paintbrush to get broken violet all over the skein and I love that. I considered just doing that but I also didn't want to do a white skein with speckles because I've done things kind of like that in other Hanukkahs and I wanted it to be different. Not to mention that I think the video I did where like the order of operations, I don't know, I've done something similar to that in a Hanukkah in the past. And so I'm like, okay, I don't want to try to recreate something that I might've done for a Hanukkah sampler, for a Hanukkah sampler, even though I guess that would be okay. I know I'm overthinking things. I'm really overthinking things. So anyway, I've picked a very Rebecca palette, and I think we're just going to play with these dry dye powders in a pan, add some speckles, and just see what we create. I may not use all of these colors, but we're going to just lean into a purple and try to do something like saturated, but I mean, it's different. And you know what? It's okay if I do purple in a lot of the different nights. How many nights, wait, have a purple in it? Uh, so there's the one that was twisted in three colors. That's all blues and greens. Does everything else have purple? Because the neons technically have purple in there. 
There's not a lot of purple where I did the twisted like minis followed by other twists. That one is the least purple of all the other rainbow colors. So I don't know, but you know what? Purple's my favorite color and I'm chasing joy. Hello, Indie Ponce. The lighting is very, very funny right now on your face. You want to say hi to the vlog? Chica, 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 chica. I know, I know, hello, boo boo. You wanna go outside, don't you? Is that what you want? What do you want? Can you show me? <laughs> That's not what I meant. Okay, yeah, I'll let you outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's still October, but I don't have any pumpkin jammies, so I'm wearing some snowflake jams as I twist up some minis. Uh, for micro skeins like this, I like to twist them for about six and a half seconds uh, using my skein twister. This is a device that is relatively expensive, but especially when it comes to mini skeins, it really does help uh, reduce any repetitive stress injuries. And so, Anyway, you can just watch me twist up a bunch because I'm going to do a little vlog time lapse. I've never timed myself while twisting minis, but it took about 6 minutes and 40 seconds for me to twist 20. Uh, and that even included time for me to check my phone about a text for grocery delivery. So <laughs> it might only take 6 and a half seconds for the actual twisting, but it does take a little bit longer to then fold the skin in half, set it aside, get the next one ready. But overall, this was honestly a little faster than I thought. I really do enjoy the process of twisting minis, uh, mainly because I can watch some TV while I do it. And that makes the whole thing fun. And plus, my wrists and things don't feel sore by the end of the day, thanks to this skein twister. So I'm very, very grateful. It would take a lot longer if I was having to add all of that twist to the minis manually. I haven't vlogged in a little bit, but I'm doing now some of my last flat lays. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've got the second bonus colorway here as well. It's looking a lot more pink on my phone. <laughs> I'm hoping to start shipping the yarn one week from today, or at least to start, which means this week I need to twist and label all that yarn, finish those flat lays. I need to then start wrapping the minis. I have one more set of stitch markers that I need to add the hooks for. But otherwise, things I think are going according to schedule, which is good. I have tentatively decided this week that during Hanukkah, I'm not going to also have Dye Pot Weekly this year. I feel like I'm still super behind with my reg regular content, and I still don't have, I've eaten through the backlog of backup content that I had filmed but not yet edited and so I'm still trying to get ahead on that and that's hard because honestly I'm struggling. <laughs> I'm struggling a fair amount, fair amount. Not with Hanukkah like it's you know just in general and so I know that it's okay to let myself feel the grief and to take time. I just you know I don't want everything to crumble that I've worked really hard to build and so that is hard that is hard but you know what we're we're doing okay <laughs> and we're almost ready to ship which is great I do like the actual wrapping of the minis part I don't know if I'm going to need to wrap them in tissue paper or if the little bags that I have will be enough Fingers crossed that the bags themselves aren't going to be too see-through because then I don't need the tissue paper. But I do have tissue paper in case I need it. I think I've thought of everything. But Dyeing yarn is an escape for me. And so working and filming often lets me tap in to the happy-go-lucky part of myself. Even if when I stop, then the emotions and the grief and everything would come crashing back. Now in December, I mean, I'm still all over the place because as I mentioned in the intro, it's only been four months since my mom died and it still feels really, really fresh. And my birthday's in a couple of days. So there's just a lot. Thankfully, I have a very strong support system. I have a lot of local family. I have my husband and my kids. So I'm not alone. And so I just wanted you to know that, that I think I'm doing, honestly, as good as one could be doing, all things considered. All right, I have the yarn in the 
order that I dyed it. And I'm going to take off the lids in a moment, but I don't think that this is the order I want to release it in. Part of me wants that black tonal down there near the beginning. And I'm fairly positive I want the black light blue to be the very first one. So I know I want to start there. Now those four go super well together. But then we have like the ones that are more muted because we've got, I guess I'm C, D, uh, and G are muted. I don't know, there's, there's brights in some of these as well. Ooh, this is hard. I can't zoom back <laughs> enough to show everything. So I like this order for these, uh, the way that I swapped it. Uh, because I also like that the two that are the more repeating variegated ones are not right next to each other. But one problem I have here is we go twisted, variegated, twisted, variegated, speckled, speckled. So I would like to mix it up a little more. I would move this one more to the end, but there's a chance someone might want to use the black tonal if they're knitting things in order, which you definitely don't have to do. Okay, maybe this, because the goal isn't for it to be a fade, but I just want things to flow and to feel like that they could work with things next to it. And I actually think that this works pretty nicely, especially because I've now split up the twisteds and I did want this one to come first. I think we have something here. Okay, actually, let me pull out those two on the bottom so I can see it all together. This is actually pretty nice. I'm going to add numbers to all of these in a moment. But yeah, you can get a sense of the order that I dyed everyone in. <laughs> the pen I brought up to write the numbers on is a little bit pastel. But see, now I also have this for my records, which is very important. <laughs> the reason it is so important for me to record this is because I need to go and put the yarn mops in order with the episode numbers, because right now I just have the letters written on them, not their corresponding numbers or anything, because that's how I was keeping track of which yarn mop is from which date. And I need all those yarn mop full skeins to be labeled with the correct date. So I had to figure out the order before I could go and do that. And it's a lot, it's a lot to figure it out. And so now once I go and start changing it, I can't really change back. Uh, and so I need to stick with that. These are just the yarn mops slash leave no dye behind skeins from this year. And there's some that I have already wrapped up, but these ones I need to put in the correct order so I have the right date and episode number with them because for now they're just labeled with those letters. It is the moment of truth to see how see-through these bags are. You know, this is better than expected. I picked a very variegated yarn to see what I could see through here. And at least in this light, I can't really tell. In one of these, I put 200 grams of yarn to mimic nights one and two. Backlit, I mean, can I tell the color? All right, more different lighting, and I'm even gonna bring over more light, you know? I can't really tell. I mean, you can sort of tell here that we've got some orange there, but I can't tell, and I know what's in this, that it's the variegated yarn. Ooh, that's great. Yeah, I mean, you could see a hint of the color through, but most of the detail is hidden. It's possible that, say, night two with the high contrast might show through, but Maybe not, and you might be able to tell that it's a really dark color, maybe. But ultimately, I am looking at this and I know it's in there and I don't see the pink showing through. And so I think that this works without me having to use tissue paper, which means that the wrapping is so much simpler, which is great. <laughs> I got this far, and I realized that I'm not doing night eight. I'm doing night five. Time to go backwards. And the only reason why I have to go backwards is because there's stitch markers in all of them. Bummer. 
The good news is that these labels peel off really well and are still sticky. Hopefully they will still hold. Please, 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 please. I'm course correcting now. And it seems like the label's gonna hold. But the nice thing is that you can peel this off without ripping it. So that way you can add it to paper, put a hole punch or something on if you wanna label any of the minis individually. Oh, look at those rainbow. I'm packing up the neons now and you can kind of see the yellow or I don't know, I actually remember now if that was orange or pink. Uh, so that's not ideal, but I still don't think looking at this package, you'll be able to guess what the colorway is and that little amount peeking through also doesn't give you a feel that we've got tonals here. Uh, I'm wondering if the blacks are gonna show through, but these are the penultimate uh, packages that I'm wrapping for the first wave at least because I have a lot of the others that are waiting over here for the second wave. I've talked about this in past Hanukkah vlogs, but I wrap things in waves because if I was gonna do over a hundred wrapped packages from each night, there's a greater chance I could mix them up when I'm going and adding them to boxes. And so by doing fewer at a time, I can do, I think I'm doing 55 right now instead of 50. Usually I would do about 50 and then I can go and pack and ship those boxes and then go to the next round. And also I think the number is around the amount that I can get to fit in a container. And it just makes all of that easier. Um, it's easier to manage. And then actually it means I can start shipping sooner because I haven't started doing the full conclusions for Actually, I guess this vlog, because that's where I'm going to want to show all eight nights laid out with the bonus gains and the bonus items. And I can do that once I've ha I've shipped the bulk of the pre-orders, because also these boxes right here are getting lighter and lighter <laughs> as time goes on and it makes it easier to bring down. But my mood is good. Uh, the wrapping I'm doing this year is pretty quickly it's it's going pretty quickly uh especially because i think i'm not having to wrap in tissue paper and then seal the package i can put the yarn directly in the bag and with everything that's gone on with me this year i think that having that be a little simpler but still beautiful i mean i haven't put the date labels on these but i like the sticker i'm um, simple but beautiful and hopefully the love is still felt in there with this yarn and the packaging and everything. It's later afternoon and I'm not seeing the darks through. I think it's like the bright colors like the yellows and greens that really show up. So yes we might be able to tell that this has something darker in it but I don't know if you'll be able to tell that it's a black tonal until you open it up and you're like wait that's a lot of black yarn because <laughs> the way it's folded in there I can't see the other well actually because these look like they have a lot of black in them which they do so woohoo here I filmed just a little time lapse of me wrapping up some of the minis and the rhythm I get into when I'm putting a progress keeper inside the package I find that it helps to carefully count out the number of minis I'm going to wrap in a batch and also count out those progress keepers. That way I can watch as the number of minis goes down from 10 to 1. I can see that with that little assortment, that aliquot of progress keepers. Does aliquot even work if it's not a liquid? I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, but this sort of helps me keep things organized. And so I put the minis in, I fold it, and then I come back and do the two stickers on after. And I go from container that has the minis to a container that holds the wrapped minis from one night. So that way I can then go and set it up and organize it in sort of my little circle for when it comes to packing boxes. And if you're curious about how long this takes me, that time lapse I just filmed was about 10 minutes long for me to wrap 10 minis. And this tracks, because I think I did six sets of 40 last night while watching the first five episodes of season two of Loki. And so, yeah, that, that seems like the pace that it tends to go. I think each of those episodes is like 40, 50 minutes or something. Uh, and so it's not bad and I can watch TV and stuff and it's fairly relaxing. And actually Lucas was fairly interested while watching me while we were watching the TV. Um, and he was like, Wait, mom, is there anything I can do to help? And since I want to try to get the labels as centered as possible, 
Uh, I'm not having him help me out this year, but maybe I'll have a hired helper to help me out next year. Um, certainly the kids have helped me sort things in the past, and so uh, I'm excited to see how he might want to contribute moving forward. Here is my packing circle. I have some boxes with, I think that's a yarn mop ready to go. And I'm most of the way through the first round. And so then I plot myself right down here um, and grab, I usually start at eight. So I grab the, I guess, packets and put it in to a box. And this is more of a Jewish themed organza bag versus Hanukkah, but I was happy to find something that wasn't just like generic winter themed. And so we've got this and and here we've got the gelt stitch marker and the indie ponce stitch marker along with a yarn mop uh sticker with glitter edges and there's also a coupon code <laughs> for the month of december for people that ordered samplers i finally dropped off probably 95 percent of the packages and i have a handful more at home that i need to just sort of arrange and ship so that is really really good it is october fourth no november 4th it's monday whatever the monday is of this week oh my gosh but also i know the nitpicks big sale is starting and so i'm like it's starting this week so i also have to get ready for that and so i'm like oh, okay and so i'm trying to time the restock of the new add-ons to when i know the big sale is going to start so that way i can sort of go live to promote the big sale and promote myself, which is like a win-win-win. I'm not contractually obligated to promote nitpicks or anything. It's more of, I make a lot of commissions during the big sale. And so it's to my own benefit to promote the big sale and to talk about it because with someone who uses my affiliate link, then I earn a commission. And so that is a win-win-win. Well, yeah, so it's gonna be a very busy, busy week. But anyway, it's nerve wracking to walk into the post office when you know no one's really happy to see you with a lot of boxes, whether it's the employees or other patrons, other customers, even though I try to do the scan form, which by the way, if you sell on Etsy and you do a lot of things, after you've placed like all your sh purchase or shipping labels from them, you can go through in the completed orders and select those. And there's a button at the top to like make USPS scan form. And then it'll make one barcode. So then when you go to the post office, they scan that and that enters all of the barcodes, all the tracking numbers that you just did into the system. And so employees are happy when they figure that out. Yeah, I pick a post office that has a parking lot I can park in really easily. Uh, I don't know, I loathe driving. I don't know if I've talked about that before. I hate driving so much i mean like obviously i can drive and i do drive but when i can walk i try to do that uh much to my kids chagrin when i um walk to pick them up from school on days they can't take the bus home so uh yeah they don't always love that but i try to do that and as for the rest of the packages that i have left the handful left i've already wrapped the minis i did that this morning because i also another tip if i try to hit the post office around 10 a.m because if you go too early then you have like rush hour traffic and people who are trying to get there before work to drop things off so there can be more of a line and same thing if you go around like lunchtime you can hit more of a line because people are going on their lunch break so 10 a.m is like the happy the happy the happy perfect in between um like 2 p.m is also typically a good time but sometimes if you get things there in the morning then it can get out that day and so that's also better but actually one of the next things i get to film is like all of the um yarn together like the eight minis with the charms and the like what the boxes look like and so i'm actually really excited about that but anyway let's go uh check it out because i think that's probably what's going to come next in the vlog I've shown elements of this throughout the video, but let's unbox some of our samplers. Do, do, do. Hey, when you open, when someone opens up their sampler, they will see the lovely Hanukkah card signed by me. A welcome letter that talks about the series, uh, when you can find the videos, where to find them, and a little bit about what's in the box. And then the standard samplers have eight 
wrapped packages with our little holographic stickers with the date on them. And we have a little organza bag with some extras. So in the organza bag, there is a business card that has a coupon code on the back. Uh, there is the yarn mop sticker that has a holographic glitter edge, kind of matches the little markers. And then we have two progress keepers. We have our little 2023 gelt marker and then a little indie marker. Maybe it's technically supposed to be a polar bear, but I thought that it looks like my dog, so I included that. There are two more progress keepers in our sets. We have the little glass jar filled with, I mean, technically it's colored pencil shavings, but I feel like that the uh, pencil shavings look a lot like speckled fiber. And then we have a glittery snowflake. And these are the fun extras from the 2023 sampler. But what you've all been waiting to see are the mini skeins all together. We have nights one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The one biggest difference between sets, there's some minor differences where I might do a more saturated or a less saturated version of a colorway, but the second neon skein will vary. And so you might have one of these other colors besides the green. Uh, the colors in this skein here also will vary a little bit, but uh, the, the main big visual difference will be the neon. There is one thing I quickly want to do, turning off a lot of the ambient light and bringing in my black light. Ooh, whoa, interesting. So in our yarn, we absolutely see the fluorescence in those four colors, very little in that purple, our blue, the green hair, the pops in that black. Um, okay, we have a hint of some pink fluorescence in this one, which makes sense, we did use purple pop. I'm not really seeing any fluorescence here where we use the radioactive, but I am seeing fluorescence in this skein. Uh, so maybe emerald green has a fluorescent pigment in it? That is surprising me, because if I turn off the light and turn it back on, that definitely has fluorescence in it. And so when you completely unbox one of these sets, you'll have all of this in there. And then for our 100 gram add-on skeins, these are the colorways that we have and how that coordinates with our main colorways for this year. And the extras are these little uh, yarn ball charms. The yarn mops and the uh, quote bonus bonus skeins have different charms than the ones I've shown here, but this is really our 2023. Chemist Hanukkah Sampler. Which one of the nights was your favorite this year? I love the way so many of these colorways came out and I think that the progression is very fun together. Yes, it definitely has an element of a scrappy sampler and I do have a blog post on my website that has a lot of different scrappy projects that are free, knitting and crochet patterns uh, that you can use with either remnants or mini skeins. And so I'll include a link to that blog post down in the video description. And that's a wrap on Hanukkah 2023. Right now I'm feeling impressed that I finished editing the vlog and tonight is still night five of Hanukkah. I feel like I'm making excellent progress. Of course, it's not a wrap for 2023. I still have some other videos to edit for this year and for the beginning of January. And I have some other yarn dyeing I want to film, but I don't know, I'm really, really excited and proud. Oh, what a way to finish off 39. Look at me being right on target, uh, getting all of this edited. <laughs> If you didn't know, editing is probably my second least favorite task that I do when I make videos. My least favorite task of everything is washing the yarn after I've dyed it. That is the thing I dislike, I think probably more than anything else. But after that, I don't actually mind editing. I love my job, I love what I do, but I enjoy filming new content and making new content and dyeing more yarn more than I do the editing process. So I'm very excited because Hanukkah with 11 videos, that's a lot of editing. Uh, it's a lot of production work to put this together. And so being at this final stretch, sitting here filming this talking head is exhilarating. <laughs> 
I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you all so much for joining me and celebrating Hanukkah with me this year. I hope you enjoyed seeing this behind the scenes look at our vlog. And don't forget to go check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Uh, there is some Hanukkah yarn left, but there's also other hand dyed yarn featured in my videos. And so you can bring some home with you. And if you already had a sampler, there's a coupon code that is good for the month of December, uh, which you which you can even use on other Hanukkah yarn. I think this is the first time I've had samplers left at this point uh, in the week of Hanukkah. Sometimes there's a couple left uh, in the middle of the week, so hopefully they sell uh, by the time you see this vlog. But if not, I'll figure out something else fun to do with that yarn myself. Subscribing is the biggest way that you can help support the content here, but if you're looking for other ways to help support Chemnitz and maybe you don't need more yarn, you can go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon or you can join to become a channel member. Details for everything will be down in the video description. At this time last year, I had already started planning for next year's Hanukkah. And I haven't started doing that now. I don't know yet what's going to be coming up in 2024, but I know that I have a lot of bare yarn, we've got a lot of a blank canvas to play with, and we're gonna have a lot of fun, dye a lot of yarn, create a lot of colorways, play with different fiber types, and I'm so excited to see what the new year will bring. Thank you so much for watching!